morning and a pledge by Kirsten Katmeyer. Kirsten? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, reminder, if you haven't, please turn off your cell phones and meeting documents are next to Commissioner Kelly on the side there. And if you need a listening device, Robert will be able to help you with that. With that, we'll go into routine business. Item number one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to make a, a motion to approve the agenda with a change moving item 16 to right after item 11. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any other corrections or changes? That we will make a, uh, a motion and a second to move item 16 to item 11 to amend the agenda. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion unanimously passes, and now we need a motion to approve the agenda with Mo the amendment. Motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Motion and a second to approve the agenda as amended. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> Thank you. Item number two is to approve the county commission minutes of October 29th, 2013. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the commission minutes of October 29th. Any corrections or changes? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item three are bills to be paid in the amount of $553,562.72. Pay the bills. Okay. Se second. We have a motion and a second to approve the bills as stated. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. There are no reports today. The next item is personnel. A is to approve the routine action. Is there a motion to approve routine action? Motion to approve routine action. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve routine action. Any comments? Carrie, do you have any comments? Not on the routine action. So. Thank you. Uh, those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. <clears throat> Item B is to recognize significant employee anniversaries for November 2013. Carrie Deaver. I have several anniversaries for you this morning. The following are celebrating anniversaries in November. Angela Reynolds Murphy, who's a senior deputy to public defender in the Public Defender's Office, and Shelly Sobald, collections assistant in the museum, both celebrating five years of service. The following are celebrating 10 years of service. Rex Smith in the jail. Lindsay Butcher in the jail, Matthew Anenson in the jail, Rebecca Martell and Seamus Walsh, both in the jail, and then Amy West, who's an accountant in the treasurer's office. Celebrating 15 years of service is Russell Drexler with the highway, and celebrating 30 years of service are both Mary Lightelt, um, who works for the jail, and Lisa Behrens, who works at JDC. And I don't know if you see Mary in the back, sure. although we usually see her out there. Um, but Lisa is here today. Lisa, any comments? <laughs> and in the back. Yep. Oh, Russell. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Russell is celebrating the 15 years of service. So a couple of significant anniversaries here with us. Anyone else? Uh, Russell and Lisa, thank you for your service, and uh, we're glad you're here this morning. We appreciate uh, everything you do for the county, and uh, certainly your years of experience make uh, county run smoother because of your commitment, so thank you for that. Thank you. Item C is to recognize volunteers in county government for October 2013. Karen Deaver. October, another big month, 229 volunteers throughout several areas of county, and as you know, we benefit greatly from their volunteer hours so our thanks goes out to them as well awesome resource thank you Carrie thank you. there are no application for abatements today and there are no notices and requests the next item is a planning and zoning notice to authorize the county auditor to publish a notice of hearing to consider an amendment to the 2002 revised joint zoning ordinance for Minnehaha County and the City of Sioux Falls 
Move to rezone from the revi revised resurrection plan development to A1 Agricultural District. The property is legally described as Track 2 of Resurrection Edition, North Half, Section 31, Township 101 North, Range 50 West. The hearing is to be held at 5 p.m. November 26, 2013 at Carnegie Town Hall, 235 West 10th Street in Sioux Falls. Good morning, Scott. Thank you. Scott Anderson representing the County Planning Department. And I think Cindy did a very adequate, great job of <laughs> summarizing what uh, is occurring. Uh, this is a request to authorize the auditor to publish a hearing notice. Uh, the property is approximately 120 acres and it's located a, about a mile and a half west of uh, the intersection of South Ellis Road and West 41st Street. Uh, this item went to the Planning Commission last Monday, a uh, week ago Monday, which was October 28th, and before the Joint Planning Commissions, and they uh, unanimously recommended approval of the rezoning request. So today my request to you is to authorize the auditor to publish that hearing notice on a meeting that would be on uh, November 26th between, would be a, a joint meeting of the County Commission and City Council at 5 p.m. And uh, I have provided the auditor's office with the appropriate hearing notice to be published in the paper and some other supporting documents like the ordinance and fact of adoption. So, yeah, it's ready to go on uh, November 26th. I'd be glad to answer any questions. And this is a general, uh, this is a map showing the, the uh, area to be rezoned, which as I indicated is 120 acres. Thank you, Scott. Does anyone have any questions? Commissioner Heiberger? Just a comment. Not very often that we see uh, planned development land changed back to agricultural, but with the cost of what uh, corn can bring on a property, especially 120 acres, that's pretty significant. Uh, the applicant also indicated that uh, when this originally was developed as a planned development for uh, cemetery usage, that there's been a change in uh, people's trend towards cremation, and so they aren't needing as quite as many spaces, and it just it doesn't fit into their plans anymore. So they're rezoning it back to ag, and we'll be deciding what to do with the property. Any other questions for Scott? If not, motion to approve uh, the notice. We have a motion and a second to approve the notice. Uh, any other <coughs> questions or comments? If not, those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Thank you. There are no petition for compromise of lien today. The next item is an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here this morning who would like to make a comment about anything that is not on the agenda, we'd like to hear from you now. Not on the agenda. If not, we'll move to... Um, Item 10, except it's not 915. No. So we'll move on to item 11. Consider a request from Sioux Falls Community Foundation to sponsor Sioux Falls Community Based Planning Project. Mary Tidwell. We were just in a big hurry to get to you, Mary. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you for taking time for, for me to be here today. I also want to thank you for your past participation in the Sioux Falls Tomorrow Projects and urge you or invite you to join us again in 2014. Um, <clears throat> perhaps you are aware, or may, some of you may have participated in the 2004 or the 1994 Sioux Falls Tomorrow Projects. The first project in 1994 was to gather a group of community um, citizens and leaders together to talk about not just one aspect of the community, but to integrate and talk about all the needs of the community, whether they be health and human services, uh, crime and social justice, um, economic development, the cultural arts, whatever they may be. And that project resulted in a blueprint for the city and the area for about 10 years. Um, I was a member of that first group, and my, my assignment was the education committee. And one of our dreams, we were told to dream big, to just say, what would you like the community to be in 10 years? And our dream was to have a place where students could get graduate education in Sioux Falls and not have to travel to Vermilion or Brookings. At that time, the university and SDSU were not particularly friendly. Um, and that was a real dream. And I thought, boy, if that ever happens, I hope I live to see the day. <laughs> well, my goodness, look at that beautiful campus we have out there and how many students it's serving. Another dream we had at that time 
was to put health clinics in the schools. And you know that now we have health clinics in Washington and um, Hayward School and several others in the community where, where citizens can access health care easily. So the process works. We dream big, but from that, community um, factions take those, those recommendations and have gone with them and said, it's a big dream, but we can make it happen if we work together. And you all know that happens in this part of the, the state. Um, in, 19, or in 2014, we will embark on Sioux Falls Tomorrow 3. We anticipate six meetings from January through May. We will be inviting participants, whom we call stakeholders, from a broad variety of areas um, to meet with us. And we will also have, as we have had in the past, open forums where any citizen can come and express their concerns, their dreams, their hopes, their whatever for the, for the Sioux Falls area. Uh, I'm here today to answer your questions and in, to invite you as a county commission and a county to be a participant in this project as you have been in the past. There will be six, we hope, six co-sponsors. We have invited Lincoln County, Minnehaha County, the City of Sioux Falls, the Sioux Falls Area Chamber of Commerce, the Sioux <coughs> Falls School District, and the Sioux Falls Area Community Foundation who is kind of the general overall sponsor of the event. Uh, we invite your participation in three ways. We would like your endorsement of the project that you uh, approve and you're enthusiastic about the potential it offers for you too. We would like you to assign one person from the county to be on our steering committee. This person would help then um, determine the um, progress of the, of the project and we anticipate meeting with that steering committee probably two times before the end of this calendar year. So we will be starting that very soon and we would invite your financial support. Of course, we um, are glad to take anything that you are willing to give us, little or big, but we are suggesting a gift of around $5,000. Um, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them. It's a project that allows people to dream big and think big, and it's the kind of thing that moves, has moved Sioux Falls forward in an integrated way, not ignoring any aspect of the community, but, but dealing with with everything in one document. And I think you received a copy of the Sioux Falls Tomorrow 2 document. A similar document will be published at the end of Sioux Falls Tomorrow 3 next summer so that for the next 10 years you can look at how people are dreaming big for this area. Are there any questions that I can answer? Does anyone have any questions for uh, Mary this morning? Mark, do you have any rebuttal about USD and SDSU not getting along? They love each other and they work well together. Oh, they do. They do now, but way back when the story was different. Uh, I remember that. Yes, Absolutely. I'm sure you do. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your time and um, your interest. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Mr. Chair, they do have a football game coming up. <laughs> uh, can we ask you to look for opportunities or places for us to uh, support this financial? That since it wasn't budgeted, we would uh, need to look for specific things to change. Yes, Commissioner. Um, <clears throat> just as a reminder, back <coughs> in the 2004 project, this commission did participate financially to the tune of $2,000 uh, for the last program. Um, the request this year is for five. You have really two opportunities or two venues if you choose to participate. Number one, and these are in no particular order of importance, but you, um, you do have money in the general fund. It would require a budget supplement action to a specific budget, most likely the commission office under the community projects ASN. And, you know, of course, there's a hearing and notice process to do that. However, you also have available, there's $25,000 in the commissioner's contingency fund that's, budget, that's already budgeted for 2013. If you, if you would like to use those funds, you can transfer some of that to a budget, and that's just a simple motion. It doesn't require a notice of hearing, and we can do that at the appropriate time. And that typically, you know, we use the contingency fund for year end, you know, uh, because it's a budgeted item and we don't have to have a notice of hearing because it's already in the budget. Uh, we typically use that to cover some small shortfalls at year end. So if you're going to use, if you want to use that fund, I would just remind you to keep that um, 
in the back of your head that that was one of the main reasons but it is a fund that's available for you for this purpose if you so desire thank you Ken <clears throat> anyone have any comments Commissioner Kelly well this I think this program's kind of proved itself and what's happened to Sioux Falls since 1994 and the changes we've seen and, and Sioux Falls and Minneapolis County and uh, I think this project I, I think we really need to be a part of this project and participate with them and participate financially uh, I'll make a motion but I'll see if there's any other comments first Mr. Heiberger I have a comment and that um, I read their um, 2004 report which was very interesting and you can see a lot of things that have happened probably as a result of their brainstorming I'm not in favor of supporting them to the full five thousand dollars for several reasons one and I realized they probably weren't thinking about this when we were in the middle of budget but there was a lot of nonprofits that came forward with their requests made out that we denied completely or gave them a small fraction of what they asked for um, I feel like it's a responsibility also of this county to care for the people who don't can't care for themselves and in a lot of places we've cut their funding and outside agencies and so for that reason I won't support your motion um, Commissioner Kelly if you ask for the full amount but I would support um, probably 50 percent of what they asked for Commissioner Barth well I agree with uh, Dick and Cindy on this um, I, I do think that our problems uh, are solvable and I see from that earlier document that we took on some of these issues directly but uh, right now we have such problems in this county with our revenue source uh, and with the uh, it, drastic increase in crime that we're experiencing with the huge increases in poverty in our in our county uh, uh, Cindy's is right also that these other agencies that we uh, that came to us for help that we were unable to assist um, it's uh, it's difficult to uh, uh, to ignore them our department heads need more money we have cost overruns and detox and uh, in so many other areas um, uh, we, we could easily do with another million dollars to solve some of the problems we have in this county and certainly uh, whether it's 2500 or 5000 it's not that big of, uh, of a expenditure but uh, uh, it's difficult uh, for us uh, with what we have to take care of everything that comes before us other Hello, comments? Sue, do you have a comment? Yeah, I do. Um, frankly, I'm in favor of supporting this. Uh, I think it's a little uh, necessary for us to realize the fact that uh, property taxes are the revenue source for what makes our uh, income uh, meet our expenditures. And with the growth that we've had uh, since that original study was done, uh, they are the ones that are helping us meet our budget requirements and without a plan to get where we're going to go and how we're going to get there uh, it's um, I think short-sighted on our part if we do not become involved with this the second thing is is that that is really our only growth area that we have is property tax valuations and uh, finding ways to enhance the community for a number of years this happens once every 10 years so it's a 10-year investment and you can't have frankly just the benefits and not make an investment uh, so I would strongly encourage us to support this uh, I don't think that we want to uh, be short-sighted frankly in how this uh, may or may not become part of our solution to some of our problems then I would have a motion to to support the program with five thousand dollars taken from the contingency fund and on comments afterward okay is there a second mr. chairman a question for you would you like to have a second I would I'll second it okay <laughs> I can't tell you what to do <laughs> God knows we've seen that experience <laughs> Commissioner Kelly. Well, I understand, you know, when Cindy said we cut the nonprofits, I think this thing is rather global and and I, I think it's important. I think it's important to us for property tax income. It's important to the nonprofits for just the growth of the community and, and their ability to raise money. Uh, 
I, I, I think this thing should be funded at what they're asking. I think they've set a budget. They've got six participants. I hate to see us be the second kid on it and then have everybody else going, well, we'll give you 2500 because that isn't going to accomplish what they need to accomplish. Uh, Jeff mentioned the crime deal and the felony increases. And as you know, I've been kind of working a little bit towards some sort of a, a study or, or something on, on, on this issue. And um, I think that we can, through there, some of the questions they ask when they do it in, on the community and stuff can be answered, and they can work with that a little bit too. But, but I do think the, the, the success of this program from 1994 to 2004 and then from 2004 to now just in what we've seen in this town, we went through a recession nationwide that, that didn't affect us huge. Uh, right now, city city uh, building permits are up with 54% on housing, and I think ours are about 54% up. We just didn't announce it, which we should have. And so I would encourage your support for for going with this program with a full 5,000. Comments? Commissioner Heiberger? I'm not going to. What you said is very true, but my comment is that um, we're taking this from the contingency fund, and I would suggest that if you're going to go forward with the vote for 5000 that you shouldn't take it for the, from the contingency fund, and you should take it from the general fund and have a supplement done just because of the history of how we use our contingency fund. Well, Commissioner Kelly? The contingency is general fund money. It's simply a budgeted item instead of going for a supplemental. I realize that. Any other comments? Commissioner Barr? Well, again, I think uh, so many of our problems uh, uh, are, appear to be insoluble, but this is the type of organization or type of uh, thing that can brainstorm and find ways past, uh, past the, uh, the barriers, uh, finding innovative ways, and that's what we really need. And, uh, Dick's uh, talking about uh, working on a study on our crime issue. That's, that's a great idea, Dick. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for, uh, I'd urge them to find another source of income for Minnehaha County besides property tax because our dependency on that uh, pales in uh, comparison to the budgetary needs that we have. Uh, so uh, I will support it at this point. Well, I will just make one final comment. $5,000 of a $66 million budget is one one hundredth of a percent. Uh, so we're not talking about dramatic changes to anybody's budget. I would recommend that it come out of the contingency fund, and if we need to make any supplemental issues at the end of the year, that we discuss those issues separately and not take it out of something that hasn't been budgeted for. So um, I would support the motion, and Jeff, thank you for making that for me. So uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the $5,000, correct, for the um, Sioux Falls t tomorrow. And I don't know if you're calling yourself 2014 or what? 2014, three. Three, okay. If, I think we need to make a uh, roll call vote just to be sure. Commissioner Barth? Aye. Heiberger? No. Kelly? Aye. Benegan? Yes. <coughs> Okay. Motion <laughs> unanimously passes. Uh, do we want no. to? Uh, no, it doesn't. No, I <laughs> yeah. It I can't write and talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the thing I was going to say, and thank you for correcting that, is anyone want to uh, step forward at this point to be part of the uh, representation of the county on the uh, Sioux Falls tomorrow three, or we can uh, talk about that at a later point? I would do it. I'd be interested as well, but I, I do have schedules uh, in December where I might be out of town and stuff. Okay. So. I, I'm sorry that I don't have those dates yet. I mean, that might be, Mr. Chairman, if we could wait for the dates. Maybe. That's fine. As soon as we get the dates, I will get them to you. And we'll work that out. out. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you for doing this. Just make, we'll make sure the crime is discussed. Yeah, okay. Which it was before, I have to admit. We had a special it's a very big issue for us. It's 55 percent of our budget. So uh, if uh, we need to get someone's attention, this might be a great place to start. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, now we'll go back to uh, 16. Kim is indicating. Oh, okay. okay. 
Yeah, they have to leave. Yeah. I'm sorry. Which is a brief, briefly an update on Highway 100 project and downtown rail lo relocation project. Travis Dreesen and Josh Peterson. Good morning. Good morning, members of the commission. My name is Travis Dreesen. I'm the Sioux Falls Area Engineer with South Dakota Department of Transportation. Today to provide just a, a brief update from where we are uh, with South Dakota 100 and answer any questions that you might have in regard to that. Um, for those of you who don't know, South Dakota 100 is a regional uh, expressway. It's a multi-lane divided highway extending from exit 402 on Interstate 90, which is Timberline Road, and it extends south and west down to County Highway 106 in Lincoln County, which is the T interchange. Um, after completion of a project this summer, I have a graphic up here showing what has been completed to date, and after the summer, South Dakota 100 is complete from just north of the 57th Street intersection on Highway 11 down to Highway 42, which is also Powder House Road. And then a portion of that roadway has also been complete on Powder House Road um, south, north of Madison Street. About half of that route is complete today. Uh, moving forward into the future, we'll be continuing uh, projects along South Dakota 100 with a stretch from Madison Street to Maple Street currently scheduled for 2015. In 2016, uh, South Dakota 100 from Maple Street uh, to Rice Street. And then 2017, 2018 will consist of the connection from Rice Street to I-90 at exit 402. That will be a two-year project. Um, with that, um, I guess I'd, I'd like to open it up to any questions you might have regarding, regarding the project, the status of the project. Um, I don't know how familiar your background is on South Dakota 100, so. Some of us a lot more familiar than we'd like to be. Okay, and that was kind of my feeling on it. Yeah, um, I think uh, I probably have gone back as far as maybe Dick, I don't know, were you involved in that? I don't, I think it just started when we were. Okay. Yeah. Um, Question, the section from 57th, to one to I twenty nine. Yes. Is there a timetable on now? Right now, uh, the best timetable I can give is that it's not in our in our current program. Um, our stip used to be based on a five year plan. We've since changed our uh, the stip is our statewide transportation improvement program. Our stip has since changed to a four year and an eight year plan, and it's currently not in our eight year plan. Uh, the state has still. Originally, the state agreed to do everything from I-90 to 29, correct? Correct, yes. Does that still apply? Yes, yes it does. The state remains committed to completing the route, the full route from 29 to I-90, yes. And do you see coming off of the existing, what is it, the Earl's exit? Um, or, or are they going to re they're going to do a new interchange? Uh, there will be a new interchange. I have a, a graphic that shows that it's a little bit hard to see. I apologize for that. And, and I will warn you that this slide is subject to change. Um, we are working through establishing a final alignment. Uh, you can see off on the right-hand side of the page, the interchange that is shown is a single point type interchange as opposed to what is there now, which is the typical diamond interchange. And then the, inter the interchange itself is squared up with the interstate. Any other questions? Uh, Travis, are all the easements, uh, have they all been acquired for that, the interchange yeah. issues? No, they haven't. Okay. Um, we're, we're handling the right-of-way on a project-by-project -project basis. 
So as we move into one segment of the project, we'll go out and we'll be talking with landowners at that time. So about what percentage of those have been completed, do you think? Just, um, we have an early acquisition that occurred just uh, south of 57th Street, one property there, but other than that, the corridor from 57th Street to Highway 42, of course all that right away has been completed because it's built. Um, as we move towards constructing it from Maple Street to Madison Street, we'll be meeting with landowners here um, within, the, uh, within the next uh, six months or so, probably on that. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, what, which intersection is this? This is uh, Madison, did you say, or in Highway 90? Um, this, the section that you're showing here on this graphic? On, on this section here, yeah, and I apologize for, for how this is showing up. On the right side of the page is the exit 402, which is the Timberline Road. Okay, and so the, the orientation is Perfect. north is to the right on this. North is to the right, I okay. apologize. Thanks. Okay. Is there going to be, pardon me, Mr. Chair, is there going to be a large bridge there then going over the railroad tracks and the river? There will be. There will be two structures on this project, um, a large structure over, <coughs> over the river there um, to get outside of the 100-year floodplain. Yeah. So it's, it's quite a lengthy, lengthy structure at this time. And like I said, this route has some complications with it. Um, currently, we have it showing just the east of the WAPA site. Um, there's a number of utilities, power poles, uh, those types of things to contend with. Yep. So we're looking at different options um, and, and kind of weighing all options from an environmental standpoint as well and uh, landowner impacts and those types of things. So uh, this alignment on the final north section has yet to be set. Good questions. Any other mm -hmm. questions? Uh, thank you, Travis, for doing that. Um, now we'll go into the uh, downtown rail relocation portion, I believe. Morning, Josh. Morning. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me here to give you an update on the rail yard redevelopment project. My name is uh, Joshua Peterson. I work for uh, the city engineering department project manager on this project for, uh, for four, four years or so. And I'll, I'll just give you, a, I won't go into a lot of the history of where we've got to where we are today, but I'll give you an update on, you know, where we are today and then what we are looking at going forward. So if you, uh, if you need any more history or questions, please feel free to jump in at any time. Um, we have completed the environmental assessment and we have selected our, our preferred alternative and this is something that we've presented at the last uh, two public meetings, three public meetings, um, where we got away from constructing a full switch yard. Um, just we had a lot of impacts as we as we worked through that process. Uh, we we had uh, some design meetings with BNSF and looking at their regional network and their system and how they operate today, and we were able to greatly scale back uh, the needed construction for the. Uh, for the project. Uh, so that helped us scale back the construction and impacts and hopefully the costs as well. And, and one thing I know that was a, a concern for, for this group here was the some of the previous alternatives got outside the, the current Sioux Falls city limits, got into the growth area for or outside of the Sioux Falls growth area. You know, we, we've been able to bring back all our construction to within the current city limits of Sioux Falls. So, you know, we, we've tried to address all those concerns. Um, just kind of summarizing what the, the alternative is, uh, we, we try to scale it back to make it more of a land purchase for us from, from BNSF. We're going to get approximately about 10 acres of land from the western half to two-thirds of the downtown rail yard as it exists today. Uh, if you're familiar with downtown, uh, Take 8th Street as an example, there's kind of two groups of rail crossings there as you're traveling across 8th Street. That western group is what's going to be removed. The eastern set that uh, runs east of the depot building that BNSF uses today, those are the tracks that are going to remain in place. Um, as far as construction goes, uh, the location where we originally had looked at for a full switch yard there uh, along Rice Street west of Timberline is now going to be scaled back to just two siding tracks, um, but it's going to be in the same general location. And then we also have a little bit of construction downtown. Um, currently, the Ellison Eastern Rail Line that services Western Sioux Falls, 
connects into the tracks and of the yard that we're going to be removing. So we just need to shift that connection over to the tracks so that are remain in place. And, and another thing that, BN, that has to happen for, for this to work out, BNSF has to change how they operate um, uh, to, uh, to account for the loss of the tracks that they're operating or that they're using today. It just means that within their existing regional network, they might have to do a little bit of organizing with the cars a little differently before they get to Sioux Falls because they won't have that opportunity uh, in the downtown area. Uh, just kind of briefly, a map. Uh, it's a little small, but uh, the yellow area is the, the land that uh, the city would be purchasing from BNSF. Um, as I said earlier, the the western set of tracks is what would be removed. They're, they're kind of highlighted in red there. Um, a new connection in downtown yard. Uh, you can kind of see it there, a little bit darker red line running under the 10th and 11th Street <coughs> viaducts to connect that um, Ellis and Eastern line into the tracks that remain. Uh, that's all within BNSF's property, so there's no new property acquisition that needs to take place. And the eastern grouping of tracks east of the depot building will remain in place. What this does is it allows BNSF to operating this, uh, the movement of trains from the line that runs to the north, northwest to Madison, um, to be able to move trains between that line and the line that runs along Rice Street out towards Corson. Um, they, cannot, they can make that movement as they do today, where they come into downtown, they reorient their their engine and then pull back out. So uh, no change basically in that movement um, from what how they operate today. Uh, probably what's more concerning to this group is the, the siding tracks. Once again, uh, the picture may be a little bit small. Um, north is up in this picture. You can just, um, Rice Street go, goes diagonal, Timberline, is right here running north um, up the map. Uh, the two siding tracks will be along the east side of the existing BNSF main line, about 3,400 feet long. Um, this is the same general area as we were looking at for the switch yard. Um, being able to scale back the length and the number of tracks, we're, we're not impacting either Timberline or Rice Street. We're, be able, we're able to fit within that footprint between the two streets. Quick question on that, Mr. Chair. Certainly. Um, so where is like Big Bear relative to this uh, photo here? Uh, Great Bear it Great is Bear, uh, is right at the bottom here. You can see, um, the access road is right here to come in. Okay. Great Bear. And so Wapa is just uh, right above the cursor there then. Right uh, Wapa would be up off up the... Up further, okay. Yep. Wapa is just uh, east of Timberline. Yep. So, uh, like I said, we're, we're getting away from a full switch yard. This is not intended to be a, a switch yard per se. This is an area for BNSF and Ellison, Inter Ellison Eastern to interchange cars. They need a spot to park car empty cars that need to be hauled out to... Uh, suppliers and where they park the new cars that need to wait until they can be uh, brought to their final customers within Sioux Falls. So that's that's the intention of this. And it is a smaller footprint and less impacts. Um, I, just highlighting again, there's going to be some modifications to BNSF's operations. Um, they're going to work within their existing system. There's no other construction that's anticipated as needed for this project, they'll be able to block and store and assemble their trains elsewhere within their system and in, in uh, switch yards um, within their regional network. And like I said, the, the siding tracks is where BNSF and Ellison Eastern will be interchanging cars. Right now, that's the, probably the primary use of those western tracks in the downtown yard. So we're getting all that switching movements out of downtown It'll alleviate a lot of the blockage of 6th and 8th Street and, and help traffic flow downtown. Said no, no additional construction planned. Uh, schedule, uh, we just did complete the environmental assessment. Uh, we signed the finding of no significant impact, or the FONSI, interesting acronym, <laughs> in, in September. 
Uh, we've just started the appraisal process uh, for the downtown yard property. Um, started that here in October and anticipate having that uh, assessment completed in January. We've started drafting the purchase agreement with BNSF, hoping to get that completed by the end of the first quarter of 2014. Then BNSF can start working on construction of the new siding tracks and a new connection uh, to implement their changes. And then once that's done, then the city would take ownership of the downtown yard property and we'd prepare it for redevelopment. So all the maps and the documents are on our website. Um, if you want uh, to look at those more, but I'll open up the questions. Thank you, Joshua. I have a couple of questions. Sure. One is uh, in looking at the property that's coming uh, to the city, uh, did, did we assess it for toxic waste and stuff like that? Is that been taken into account? Yep, uh, we, we did uh, soil sampling as part of the environmental assessment and um, you know we were anticipating some significant contamination with the hundred years of rail traffic and, uh, and industrial operations. We're, at, we're pleasantly surprised. There is some, some low-level uh, petroleum uh, contamination but nothing significant like we were anticipating. Uh, very little cleanup would be needed if we needed to, uh, if we were planning on a parking lot there, we could probably pave it over and go. <laughs> if you're constructing commercial or residential buildings on a property, we probably need to do a little bit of soil removal and mitigation, but it's, it's low level enough we could haul it to the landfill. It wouldn't take soil farming or anything uh, significant. Mr. Chair. Sir. So in as much as this property is going to cost us $4 million an acre, on the redevelopment, uh, what are we going to charge uh, folks to acquire it? Uh, uh, do we know that? Or do we have potential uh, developers already lined up to use this property? Our, our uh, planning department has already reached out to developers that have been interested in property. We've, we've got a lot uh, that are you know, chomping at the bit really to uh, get their hands on that property for redevelopment. We've put together a ten tentative master plan for what we think is going to happen uh, based on the developers that are interested in the adjacent land use. So there, there's been some discussion there, but we have not finalized the plan of how we're going to, you know, solicit int uh, official information or interest in those properties. I anticipate something of a RFP process where we get proposals from developers uh, similar to what we've done in Uptown and the the property from the uh, river ramp, things like that. So um, anticipate this going that way, but we haven't quite finalized uh, that process. It's just hard to see how $4 million an acre will work out even if you're growing corn there. Um, Go ahead, Sid. I was just going to thank you, Josh, for all the work that you've done on this and the other people that have been involved in this project. It wasn't that long ago that we had a lot of upset people on the east side of Sioux Falls. Um, and, you know, thankfully they did stand up and make their voices known because things changed. And this is probably a, well, it is a much better plan than what was originally going forward. And so I thank you for all the work you've done. I'm sure it's caused many headaches. It's so. been, uh, you know, we, we haven't had, we've had some un meetings, public meetings that were uncomfortable. Right. But, you know, that public input and that interest that people had has helped us get to this point right. where we've got, I think, a lot better alternative than we envisioned, you know, a decade ago when we yeah. first started looking at this. Yeah. So thank you um, very much. Appreciate all the public input and this this group as well for their uh, interest and support of the project. Any other questions? I got a couple. How many additional acres of development development will there be when this thing is all opened up for uh, improvement? We're going to be acquiring about 10 acres okay. through this process, and all of that should be available for redevelopment in some form or fashion. Um, you know, some of it down by the viaducts might be more parking lot oriented than than building, um, but we do probably see some mixed use there where. Um, Maybe adjacent property owners will um, shift their parking next to the railroad tracks to more fully develop the, the riverfront properties. Um, but I, I do expect to see some uh, building construction as well, especially along 6th and 8th Streets. So, um, you know, j just preliminary, what we've seen from interest on in developers, uh, that's all uh, subject to change as we move forward. Is this going to be part of a 
TIF project? That I can't tell you at this time. Um, the, the city is going to do what we can to prepare it for redevelopment so whether it, it's marketable property. Um, but, you know, that'll, that'll depend on what, what kind of development is coming up and, and what, uh, what the market conditions are once we're ready to, to develop the property. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you for going through the process. I know this has been primarily driven by Burlington Northern's directive at one point, but it's all changed, and uh, now they've become a good partner in trying to solve the problem. And uh, right now it's untaxable land and uh, need, needs to be changed, and I appreciate you guys' efforts in trying to make that happen. We also appreciate the fact that uh, if it is uh, developed with for-profit organizations that will also benefit from it, from our uh, tax base. Any other questions, comments? Thank you for coming. All right, thank you for having me. Okay, we'll move back to item number 10, which is a public hearing to consider a supplement of $3,100.53 from the general fund to the safe home budget and $41,188.29 from the general fund to the sheriff budget. Bob Litz. Good morning, Minnehaha County. Bob Litz from the Auditor's Office. And uh, today, on Tuesday, October 22nd, 2013, you authorize the Auditor's Office to post notice of a hearing to be held today, November 5th, 2013, to consider several budget supplements in the general fund for a total of $45,288.82. There are six supplements for dedicated funds, which are primarily grants and donations, that should have been included with carryover supplements approved earlier this year. Five of the supplements are in the Sheriff's Office, and one of the supplements is in the Safe Home Budget. Following action is needed to supplement the general fund budget. Motion to supplement from the general fund to the safe home budget, ASN 18180, is $3,100.53. The next five are all out of the sheriff's budget, ASN 16544 of $21,908.27, ASN 16573 for $263.37, ASN 16575 for $11,546.09, ASN 16576 for $3,993.42. ASN 16579 for $4,477.14. We would uh, ask for your action today. Thank you, Bob. Uh, any questions of the uh, auditor? Any questions? Uh, any comments from the Sheriff's Department or from uh, the Safe Home? Uh, this is a public hearing, so if anyone would like to address us on that particular uh, transfer, we'd like to hear from you now. I don't see anybody moving. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to uh, supplement the two budgets uh, to Safe Home and uh, the uh, Sheriff's budget with the amounts specified. Second. A motion and a second to uh, approve the transfer of the amounts uh, presented. Any other questions? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for waiting for us. Item number 12 is a briefing on the status of proposals received for the development and installation <laughs> of a pavement management system. Proposals were opened on September 25th, 2013. Shannon Schultz. Morning, Shannon. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Shannon Schultz, Senior Project Engineer at Highway Department. And uh, this agenda item is basically an update to tell you that we're still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What happened is that we had two bids received, uh, and those are listed in your uh, packets, uh, primarily uh, DTS and IMS. Uh, because we have not awarded a contract or selected a preferred uh, provider, we cannot name who we are pursuing uh, to enter into a contract with. Those negotiations have been detailed and ongoing. The primary reason that the delay is occurring is because one of the firms that we prefer is not audited by the DOT. So they don't have standard audited overhead rates for labor salaries, overhead reclamable costs, etc. They're very close to completing that. They thought they were done. They got 2013 done, and then the DOT requested 2012. 
And so then that got done, and then some of the DOT requested the similar uh, information from their subconsultant. So you can kind of see it's again one of those bureaucratic kind of things where it's just delay after delay after delay. And yes, we are concerned about the snow coming. However, I have talked with the uh, preferred consultant, and they assure us that as long as there's not hard pack on the ground, the pavement analysis, the field inspections uh, can occur. The downside is some of our photography, you know, uh, we're going to collect photography on all of our roadways, so basically you can drive the roads from desktop. That's going to obviously reflect what's out there this time of year, uh, which isn't all bad not to have the trees and foliage, but um, some of the things uh, might be preferred to, to be earlier done in the year. However, every three years we'll probably collect new photography, so all is not lost. It's much better than the system we have now. Uh, with that, I'll entertain any questions. So you want any questions for Shannon? Okay, but it's supposed to, Mr. Chair. I'm just going to make a comment. Oh, Commissioner Eiberg, sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I sat on that when they um, opened proposals and stuff, and it is a little bit different than the way that we have normally done things, but we were with the state DOT, and this is how they do them, and we we're following the rules, and so everything is legal and above board, and it will be fine. Patience is a virtue, is that mm, what you're yeah. saying? Yep. Stick with it, Shannon. We're staying with it. It's, it's kind of our, my control. It's between the auditors and our company. So yes, it's working out slowly. Okay. Uh, we'll go to item 13. 13 is to authorize the chairman to sign H flat documents and temporary construction easements for parcels 22947, 18672, 18728, and 18676 for project 50 215. Dash zero one zero structure replacement northeast of Del Rapids, Shannon Schultz. Good morning again, commissioners. This agenda item is basically to assign a, a request approval to sign H plats. H plats are the mylar document that gets filed, you know, as, as right of way documents um, through the audit, or through the equals or excuse me, deeds. There is a warranty deed that uh, we're requesting the commissioners to. Uh, to sign, the landowners have already signed it. Land landowner negotiations are, are basically before you in all those agenda items. Uh, I will point out that those are the only documents that get filed. You also received copies of temporary construction easements, which do not get filed. They're on record at our office, and uh, they last for one year after the completion of the project. <coughs> and we have three property owners on four parcels of ground. And uh, I will point out that two of the property owners, the farmers there, are brothers, and they donated the land, and including the easements. So that was very nice. Uh, we like to see that work out. Of course, we always ask for donations when we start, but a lot of times when there's corn involved, we don't get donations. But which it was the case, in fact, with Del Rapids School District. They have a plat of ground there that their their future farmers of American students use, and uh, the primary cost for the temporary construction easement was two years of lost crops. Uh, and then, of course, the land valuation was the H plat property transfer. Commissioner Eiberger? I just have a comment. Thank you for the explanation. I still thought it was very disappointing that the school district charged you for the property, considering they're getting a new bridge to put their buses over. And we're both run off of taxpayers' money. And neither of us have any money. And I just think it was very unfortunate that you have farmers who are giving up their property with um, no cost, but yet the school district is going to charge us to put their new bridge in. I, I thank you for the comment, Cindy. I agree <laughs> with you. They were closely advised by their attorney. I'm sure they were, but I still think it's unfortunate that we can't work together. And the dollar figures aren't a lot. No, they're not. It, but, it's but the, the principle the, of the, the deal. The principle of it is, is, is what it is, yes. Yeah. Uh, I would say this, it's been my experience in the short time I've been with the county that the larger the farmer, the more, the less he's concerned about a tenth of an acre. The smaller the parcel, the more they're concerned and want more money for their life. So. Commissioner Kelly? Well, I agree with Cindy, I, um, but it, what possible use is there of that land that they can justify a $400 Temporary rent, and then another four and That is the lost crop. If if they were to, they do produce crops and they sell them just like anybody, and that is the uh, dollars per acre lost 
because of that temporary easement will not be in service for the first year of construction, obviously, because it will be under construction. And then, again, based on their attorney's recommendation, the soil will not be as productive the second year either. And uh, that was the reason why we went with two years. The, 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 the attorney was actually arguing for three, so we, we settled on two. Uh, point zero 0.07 acres is how many square feet? About <laughs> um, 50? I don't know. What is it? Uh, 2,800? I mean, I'm yeah, just I mean, kind of point zero 0.07 times 43,000 is not a lot. Okay. Any other comments, Jeff? I just want to commend the Hanson brothers for yeah. giving us uh, the easement at zero. Thank you. I'm not going to ask for an attorney's opinion. Well, <laughs> if I could just ask Shannon <laughs> something quick. Is it, was this the transaction where the quit claim deed yes. was proposed by the school district's attorney, which we had to insist on a warranty deed? Correct. Okay, thank you. And to follow up on that with Mr. Katmeyer's comment is their attorney was not willing to sign or recommend signing by the school district a warranty deed. Of course, we as a county want it, highest level of power we can warranty deed. And so we had to go out and do a title, clear title search. So we had to pay somebody $145 to do a title search. And so it's done and done. <laughs> Again, I will say I'm disappointed, very disappointed. Thank you for the comments. Um, is there a motion? There is. Second. A motion and a second, I'm assuming, to sure. approve. To sure, approve. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the uh, construction easement agreements. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion unanimously passes. Commissioner, there's a parting comment on that. Uh, you will see a, a commission done item requesting permission to advertise this project soon. Uh, it's in Del Rapids Bridge, as Cindy mentioned, right by the school there, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that will be constructed after school's out next year. So 14 summer, that bridge will be replaced. Okay. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, one other question, Shannon. Sure. Were they aware that the farmers were donating their yes, land? Yes, I made that aware. Huh? Yes, I made the school board aware of that. Thank you. Okay, item number 14 is consider a motion to declare vehicles as surplus and authorize the transfer of the assets from the highway department to the other departments. Shannon Schultz, are you going to do this one too? Thank you. Uh, yes, Mr. Boothy was unable to attend today. He had a short thing come up this morning, and so he was unable to attend. Um, Mr. Kelly, to follow up on your previous question, uh, I was also interviewed by a local a newspaper reporter, and that article appeared in the Del Rapids Tribune. And so it was also in the news, news article. So thank you for that. Just so they're aware. Yeah. Okay, this agenda item is basically cleaning up paperwork. These vehicles have all been given to other departments. However, the title has never been transferred, or the ownership of those vehicles has never been transferred to the departments. And so that's what this is about, is just clearing those up. I worked with Sandy a little bit this morning anticipating a question that you guys might have about value for some of these vehicles. And uh, there is a value listed in our Sandy's accounting records. It's called the low value, which I don't exactly know what that means. Uh, but uh, they range from $4,000 down to $700. And we believe uh, item C03, unit C03, under equalization, the $4,000, they just knew it was worthless and so they quit maintaining the books on it. So it's probably more like the $1,000 like the rest of them are in terms of residual value. They've all been clearly depreciated. So um, if you get more technical than that, I might have to have a phone call or <laughs> a rescue line. Darlene's not here. So it moved to uh, transfer these uh, vehicles Start to the different departments. We have a motion and a second. Do we need to, Ken, do we need to have a value on them when we transfer them? No, the auditor's office is already fully aware of this and is, is, is tracking the assets and they've got all that information, uh, you know, that we have on the fixed asset report. So this is simply, we need you to declare them surplus and then authorize the transfer from the highway department to these departments. And that, uh, and this is consistent, again, with the auditor's report 
uh, that we get about, uh, you know, every year we've been dinged on this one, and that, but we need to account for them in the, in the proper fund of which they're being used. So do you need two motions? Okay, declare them surplus and then authorize the transfer. I'll okay. declare them surplus, Mr. Chairman, if I get a second. Second. We have a motion and a second to declare these surplus. Any other questions? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Now we need a motion to declare them move, uh, to transfer. Move to transfer the title to the department, to second. the service department. We have a motion and a second to transfer the titles. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Mr. Chairman, just a quick question. How old do they have to be before they get antique plates? <laughs> 1992. Jeez. <coughs> really? It's 20 years. So the they're eligible for antique plates? Well, the next item is item 15. Oh. Consider a motion to supplement $794,631.49 from the highway fund to the highway budget, representing $611,587.48 from the state of South Dakota STP swap funds. $177,844.01, representing reimbursement from the state of South Dakota and FEMA for ice storm cleanup, and $5,200 representing reimbursement from weed and pest grant program. Shannon Schultz. Again, thank you, Commissioners. Uh, request is to take basically money that's been allocated to the Highway Department and put it into our working budget. And those uh, dollars have been laid out for you. I would add a comment about the FEMA reimbursement. That's about 80% of our total expenses. The majority of that went to labor, equipment, and materials. Some of that was the purchase of small items like hand or chainsaws. Um, also on the, uh, the weed and pest program, that's for chemicals, you know, spraying chemicals. That represents about a quarter of our budget. We spent about $20,000 in chemicals. Uh, past year. So with that, I'll entertain any other questions. Any questions for Shannon? Did you say the FEMA was 80% of yes, our? Yes, about 80% of our total that was uh, accounted for in response to the ice storm. FEMA reimburses about 80%. Any other questions? Uh, can we do this as one motion? Is there a motion? So moved. Motion is there a second. second to make the uh, supplement and transfer. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. The next item is item 17 to authorize the chairman to sign the 2014 police service agreements between Minnehaha County and the cities of Baltic, Colton, Crooks, Del Rapids, Garrison, Hartford, Humboldt, and Valley Springs. Kristen Tran. Good morning, Kristen Tran with the Sheriff's Office. Um, I bring to you our annual agreements with the small towns. Um, she listed the eight small towns that we have contracts with. Uh, we did increase the hourly rate from $30.15 in 2013 to $31.30. It's based on a formula um, accounting for fuel costs um, and personnel costs, both group insurance and um, the, the expected increase in salaries. Um, Del Rapids, for financial reasons, did choose to reduce their hours slightly, but overall we're still seeing an increase um, from 2013 to 2014 in our overall hours, the revenue generated from our overall hours. So, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions for Kristen? If not, I have one just uh, quick question. Uh, what's the $10,000 credit for Del Rapids? Sure. Um, it's listed in the contract, but it is that they offer us office space. So we're able to have um, a computer set up in there that's on a much faster network than our tough books are because it's hardwired. And so they're able to have office space within the city finance office. Okay. So that is our rent annually. So. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Move yep. approval on all of these contracts. Second. Motion and a second to approve the contracts and the agreement. Any other questions? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for your patience. Item 18 is Minnehaha County Commissioner Liaison Reports. Commissioner Heiberger. I have a report. Yesterday was the Housing Advisory Board meeting. 
or the HAB meeting, and um, they have decided to send a letter to Ed Leitenberg, who is with the State uh, Parole Division of DLC, and ask them to um, present to the HAB and the Commission regarding 70, um, Senate Bill 70 and housing. We had a fairly long discussion about things that they're hearing and concerns um, about the way what they're hearing is going forward with how they're going to house these people that are coming out of the state pen. Um, just concerned with the nonprofits out there and where we're going to put them and, and some of the logistics of some of the ideas that they're hearing. So they are writing a letter um, listing their questions and concerns and then asking them to present to the commission at a future date. Um, then the other thing was that on November 7th, about 80 community members are gathering at the Falls um, Park Cafe to, um, for a program that we're calling We Are One Sioux Falls. They will be discussing low-income housing, affordable housing, homelessness, poverty wages, and they'll be looking for solutions going forward. Stacy Teason is the contact person for that um, gathering. It will be a, both a breakfast and a lunch. Um, it's going to be hosted by Vernon Brown, and the guest, guest speaker for that um, gathering is Linda Couch. She is the Senior Vice President for Policy and Research at the National Low Income Housing Coalition. So we've got a pretty um, important and interesting speaker coming, and if anyone is still interested in going, they could contact Stacy Teason about that. What's the date again? November 7th. It starts at 7.30 in the morning and goes till noon. Some people are coming for part of it um, and uh, like come in the morning or come later in the, in the afternoon. It actually is an all-day event, but the, most of the people are just coming till the noon luncheon. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Barr? Just uh, in regards to Cindy's report, uh, uh, I think this is exactly where 70, uh, Senate Bill 70 is going to hit the road here. Uh, I heard uh, that they're planning on putting four parolees into a hotel room upon their release, you know, and if it's, uh, you know, three guys that want to do better and one guy that wants to bring in a case of beer and a couple grams of meth and a couple of gals, uh, you know, one bad apple could spoil the four. I mean, I, uh, and we already have the housing issue. I think there are 3,500 people on the waiting list for low income. Uh, housing, and these guys are going to have zero income, uh, you know, plus they'll have the other hangovers of uh, crime free and sex offenders and all that. But, you know, I wouldn't put four college guys together in a hotel room necessarily uh, and expect good behavior. Sorry, I was once a college guy. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> Heiberger? I was just going to. Tail dug, dovetail off what he said, um, you know, and that's one of the concerns that they have that that is in fact true, and that the hotels that we use already for our low income, low income people, the housing is in hotels is very limited, and um, we're just concerned about you know where what, what hotels are they even going to find where they can stick for parolees in one room, and maybe that isn't true, but those are what the stories that we're being told. I guess my first question would be, is there stories, but have we confirmed that those are accurate? Those are, that's what the group was telling us yesterday. Wow. Okay. Any other liaison requests? Well, I just want to just want to comment that I was talking to the public advocate yesterday, and uh, she could use some temporary help to do filing and stuff. Uh, the end of the year stuff, they, they clean out their files and, uh, you know, it reduces the paper down to manageable amount. She she could use some help and she may come forward with that. Okay. Temporary help. Uh, any other liaison reports? If not, any new business? Any old business? If not, we're going to go into exec session for okay. our personnel. May I address the exec session Absolutely. motion? Absolutely. Um, based on the subject matter, I would advise that exec session be declared for both personnel and litigation purposes. And I would also ask that we reserve um, the possibility to reconvene in regular session after our executive session. That's fine. That's my motion. Second. We have a motion uh, and a second to go into personnel or exec session for personnel and 
litigation and the possibility to reconvene. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion unanimously passes. We'll get 